It's the end of the month. Once again, we're gonna be going over the top five motorcycle crashes and close calls. And today we're gonna to be focusing on February, 2020. Let's jump right into it. So what we have here is gonna be a left turn vehicle turning in front of us. We're gonna T-bone them. And that is a very typical intersection motorcycle crash. The other types of crashes are typically on curves, but in the urban setting, this happens way too often and causes a lot of fatalities for motorcycle riders because we have no protection. So what can we do for this situation? The best thing that we possibly can do is utilize the situational awareness code chart that I have on the bottom right. And what that's gonna be doing is that in white stage, you're absolutely oblivious. You're pretty much sleeping at that point. Now, yellow stage is typically what you're going to be riding in the majority of the time. That's where you're zoned in, you're kind of scanning around, but having a good time. Orange stage is when you see a hazard or a potential hazardous situation like intersections, curves, or pedestrians, all these different things. We'll talk about that later, but that's when you switch into a mode of, I'm going to start hovering over the brakes, I'm going to get prepped, I'm going to get ready, hyper alerted. Red stage is when you are going to utilize an emergency swerve or emergency braking. Brown stage is when you try to do emergency swerving or emergency braking, completely fail and then you poop your pants. So anyways, we're gonna be in this right here. So this is gonna be a typical yellow stage for me uh, when I'm riding around. But then when I get closer to this section right here, I'm gonna notice that this driver is gonna to start to slow down. And what you can tell is when the headlights kind of dip a little bit, that is gonna be when they're slowing down. That is something as a motorcycle coach that we look for in motorcycle riders is that we can tell how hard people are braking is when their front headlight dips. So that is a good clue and a good cue for you when you're out riding and you see all of a sudden the headlight dip or a side of the car dip, that's because they're applying the brakes and they're getting ready to do something. So, so as soon as you see those headlights break, that's when you start to go into orange stage. So right now, definitely orange stage. And I'm only gonna stay in here for a split second because I'm gonna switch into to red stage. So that way I can use some type of emergency braking, emergency swerving. Now, right here, depending on my speed, I don't know how fast this guy is going, you have a total stopping distance. That's gonna play a huge part whether or not you're gonna be able to stop in time. So if you're going too fast, this zone right here might not be enough distance for you to slow down and stop before hitting this person in your path of travel. So what you can do is slow down and then swerve or just swerve and get out of the way. But either way, you need to find an escape path. You have one to the left, one to the right of the vehicle. Which way is the vehicle going? Hopefully they continue going right. If you make a left, hopefully they stop if you make a right. But either way, you need to be switching from yellow, orange, hopefully never red, but keep going back from yellow, orange, to yellow, orange, never into brown. So we get to this point, he hits the brakes and you see that little squidding part. You see the little going back and forth. That is either locking up the brakes or a loss of traction on the tires. We talk about that in our motorcycle braking video, so you might check that out. Link will be in the description and at the end of this video. But right here, what happens when you go up and over, uh, what's not gonna be seen right here is that your legs are gonna be hitting those handlebars, possibly have some types of fractures or just a lot of bruising in those quads. Um, hopefully it bypasses pelvis and a few other things, not very good. So he's gonna hit right here and then bounce around. Now this is gonna be a good advertisement for wearing a helmet he hits the side of his head. Easily a concussion with or without a helmet, but you're gonna have a lot of lacerations, possibly a bigger concussion, more advanced concussion where you now you have a massive traumatic brain injury where you're going to have some rehab uh, going forward. So hopefully he doesn't have to have that. Hopefully the helmet absorbed most of the impact and everything's fine. So all right, let's go ahead and jump into the next one. We spent a little time on this one. Crazy accident here. It's kind of upsetting a little bit. Um, the bike was totaled. So yeah, I'm going to go flying over this hood. <laughs> But I'm healing up nice now, so should be back on a bike maybe in about a year. We'll see. Okay, I specifically let that video play a little bit more because I wanted you guys to hear the after effects. He says he might be able to ride it a year later. So this is how serious these types of incidences are, is that, you know, you might not be able to ride or you might not ever get to ride again if you get into a very bad motorcycle crash. That's the whole point of this, trying to prevent those guys. So right here, he's going 19 miles an hour. This is right after doing his 90 degree turn from an intersection to this side street. And then we're gonna move forward right here, but I want you to notice something really quick. Okay, we have kids, we have pedestrians, we have a lot of people moving in and out. This is gonna be something where, okay, we have a lot of conditions that should tell us to slow it down. We have nighttime, so poor visibility. We have kids outside and pedestrians, so possibly in our path of travel, so we definitely wanna slow down 
around so we can buy ourselves more time for these evasive maneuvers if we have to do them. Um, then we also have very bad line of sight, so you don't know who's coming in and out of these vehicles, so it's almost like a lane filtering situation. Also, we have a lot of intersections when it comes to neighborhoods, you know, typically four-way stop signs or, you know, they have to yield for us. So in this situation, definitely slow it down. That's going to be your best bet here. Slow it down, ride within the conditions present, and be on high alert. I would not be in yellow stage here. I would always be 100% orange stage until I get home or out of this situation. So with orange stage cover those brakes get ready for it get ready to swerve be on super high alert terminator eye tracking mode everything so definitely watch out for this type of stuff but if you notice right let's go back just a little bit there's the car that's going to come out we're going to go about 41 miles per hour within residential neighborhoods you want to go around 25 that is the speed limit typically in residential neighborhoods and it's there for a reason it's not there so that we can slow down and not piss off neighbors it's there so that we can utilize our situational awareness a lot easier because we're going at a slower rate of speed we're gonna be able to see things a lot quicker i would suggest 2025 especially with all these other conditions present but 41 is going to be a crash factor when it comes to what's happening here it's not gonna be able to swerve in time not be able to break in time and then possibly the other driver did not see him either because of the speed or those conditions that we talked about where they cannot see with visibility. Maybe their windshield is all tore up. I don't know. But this person ran off after colliding with this motorcycle rider. Not a good situation. So about right here is definitely when you're going to want to be from orange stage straight into red stage. This right here is an absolute emergency. You have to apply the brakes or swerve. Well, we're going 41 miles an hour. Once again, total stopping distance is not going to save us in this situation. Hopefully, that's going to be something that you're going to pick up during these videos, guys. Stopping distance is always going to be the best bet because we just can't stop in time. So a lot of the times we're gonna have to swerve in this situation. So swerving, you know, what's your best bet here, guys? Left, right, you know, what are we gonna do? So that's the whole point of preventing the accident is that sometimes you are just not left with a, an escape path or total stopping distance. So now you're kind of up to physics and hopefully you're wearing gear to mitigate the injuries so that it's not gonna be as bad as it could be without gear so he's going to go ahead and have an impact once again this is going to be more so of an angular incident this is not going to be a t-bone t-bones are from you know perpendicular straight into it uh, this is going to be more of an angular incident so you're going to have a lot of flipping a lot of torsion your brain's going to do that inside your skull you're going to have possible right here right leg trauma right arm trauma having that skier thumb where your hands on the handlebars and it just flips over and possibly breaking ligaments and bones. You're gonna have a lot of issues here. And from what he's saying, he did have a lot of issues. So once again, check out the full video on this one. Uh, it's not good. He tries to get up, can't get up. He's very confused. That right there tells me his brain got shook a little bit. Bad trauma to the brain. You don't want to have that with your brain. That I'd rather have all my bones in my body broken except for my brain. Thank you for allowing me to use this video. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Traffic does not exist. Whoa, 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 whoa! What the? Whoa, 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 whoa! What the? What the? What the? Oh. What the, dude? Holy sh! Okay, hold on. Right. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Where I'm good, bro, but I can't get up. Yeah, it, I'm test riding him. I'm about to buy the bike. So I know a lot of you guys are brand new riders, and I'm trying so hard to make it easy for you to jump into this wonderful passion we have. And I know these videos are pretty scary, but what I have is an ebook for you. It lets you know what type of safety gear to get, what type of bikes are out there, how to read the safety gear, how to read the side of your tires and make sure you got good tires, and all these different things, 55 plus pages. Right now it's on sale. Check it out. Link's in the description. And let's go ahead and jump into this one. So right here, this is going to be pretty interesting. There's a longer form video, so make sure you check it out. But anyways, we're gonna be moving forward, moving forward. And what we have here is definitely a hazardous situation. What can we see from here? We have sunlight in our eyes. We have a lot of brake lights. We have a lot of vehicles stacked up. We're moving back and forth. We're also not utilizing our own mirrors. Uh, we have one folded in. Um, you see kind of how he was riding in the full longer form video. But right here, this is definitely a hazard situation. If we scroll back just a little bit, I would be in about a yellow stage right here. I have a really good following distance. I have a lot of movement. I can see around me in the 360 cone if I'm doing my head checks and looking around. So I feel pretty good situationally awareness. 
Now I'm gonna start to transition to about orange about right here, and I think that's why he put his hands back on the handlebars. Subconsciously, you guys are doing this, but I love to know why I'm doing things, so I'd be in orange stage right here, just in case anybody wants to come out. Now I'm switching lanes. Well, I'm gonna put myself in his shoes. Uh, we're switching lanes here, and right now this is gonna be a bad situation. This is gonna be definitely orange. We have a huge stack of cars right here, and we have vehicles in the right lane consistently moving. As a car driver, I wanna be in that lane. As any rider, I wanna be in that lane. And that is why this guy is doing that. So if you're doing this, why don't these people do it? Well, they're gonna go ahead and do it too. So that's why I'm in orange stage right now. I'm gonna assume that this person wants to do what he wants to do, what I wanna do, which is move over. So if we move forward just a little bit right here, we have multiple vehicles, we have an open area. What's gonna happen? All right, so right there. That's gonna happen. Now you hear him in the original video saying, oh crap, oh crap, basically like able to vocalize what's happening. That is absolute brown stage. That is not utilizing your skills. That is in a panic. Um, that is what I'm trying to prevent for you guys. So right here, soon as you see that indicator, that should be a good clue that you need to start to get into that red stage. So what you can do in this situation is start to roll off that throttle, use some engine braking, so that way you're not applying too much front brake pressure, or you can apply a little bit of brake pressure with engine braking to slow you down. Move over to like lane position two, if you possibly can, of this next lane, and be prepared for the vehicles up ahead of you to stop, and just get yourself situated. Um, you wanna be away from the hazards, which is off to the left, so moving over to the right is fine. Now you can be in lane position three or lane position one, but right now we are super close. We're not gonna be able to do much if they just barely squeak out. So get yourself a space cushion from the vehicles to the left, but still being aware of the vehicles in front of you. So you still might have to have an escape path. Definitely going into this area too quickly for how the conditions are. So you might wanna slow down well before getting into the line or into the queue. Um, in this situation, uh, you definitely wanna swerve to the right and then hopefully swerve back to the left where you can get more so into like a lane filtering situation. So right here in this little spot, that is gonna be my escape path. Well, we have somebody in my path of travel, so I'm gonna do a swerve to the right, swerve to the left, decelerate and get in line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check my pants, make sure everything's fine. So right here, he's gonna have that impact. And guys, make sure you're wearing full gear just in case you fail at your prevention skills or evasive skills, wear the gear to mitigate it. And then hopefully if you're riding with a bunch of buddies or even by yourself, you have a med kit, treat the injuries yourself too. So right now we're gonna go ahead and crash. And what he says uh, in the original video is that he got super close. Now that handlebar and the clutch lever could easily penetrate your leg, so be very careful. So that right there, not good to have, very easy to happen. And I've seen it happen, especially with kids bikes. It's pretty crazy. So he's gonna actually have his leg trapped and a lot of uh, fluids uh, falling out of his gas tank. Now, typically your fluids itself is not gonna cause a fire, but you do have hot parts on the engine. Um, it could ignite uh, the lower flammable limit, lower explosive limit, all these different things come into play. Um, but right now, I wouldn't be too concerned about the fluid. Um, I would be more concerned about my ankle and everything being damaged. It looks like he's wearing motorcycle boots, so that should mitigate some of the injuries, but definitely get that bike off you and get away from the bike because it could, at some point, the vapors of the gasoline catch fire. It's not gonna explode, it's just the vapors are gonna catch. So get away from that. He does talk about this was a demo ride, so if you're gonna be doing that, make sure you have good insurance because if it's not your bike, they're gonna come after you. So guys, with this, make sure that we are focused on the hazards that are presenting to us, and that is gonna be, in this situation, a very long line, and then a line next to it that is moving nice and easy. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the next one where it's a really bad lane splitting crash. Guys, I am 100% for lane filtering and lane splitting. It's a tool in the toolbox for the motorcycle rider. You don't have to use it every single time. One thing that you do have when it comes to lane filtering, very bad line of sight. You cannot see everything out there. You don't know when vehicles are gonna come in or leave. You don't know, they can't see you either. So we really have to be minimizing our speed when we're traveling between vehicles here. Also making sure we have escape paths once again. We can't swerve left or right if we're in between vehicles. All we really have is acceleration, deceleration. So 
so breaking or accelerating out of the situation. And that's not really good because if there's something in our path of travel, there's not much we can do. So make sure we're doing it within conditions that are going to be best for us. So right here, got to be very careful. Okay, guys. So we're going to be moving forward. Uh, he's going about 30. I think that's 33 miles per hour. That's not that's not crazy. It might be 10 to 20 miles an hour over the actual vehicles here. So it's not that crazy, but just realize even just that much, it's going to reduce our reaction time to being in red stage where we're going to have to swerve or break. So right here, what are the telltale signs we can follow up on? Guys, we have an open lane to the left vehicles stacked up on the right. What do you think drivers are going to want to do? They're either going to move left or move right. I am always going to assume they're going to go into my path of travel. So about this situation, definitely be in orange stage. Let me go ahead and scroll back a little bit. I would be in orange stage for all of the lane filtering, but right here, you know, if I have more skill and I've been doing this for quite a while, I'd be in yellow stage, but you definitely want to pick up different clues. So if you see indicators, if you see tires getting close to the lines, if you see anybody kind of slowing down, applying those brakes, maybe they're going to swerve into your lane or in your path of travel. These are all different clues. So I would definitely be in orange stage, but right here, this is right here is going to be a hazard clue specifically. And I would definitely be in orange stage. I would assume one of these vehicles are going to turn in front of me. That happens all the time. We're actually going to see one of these videos pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. So he's going to go ahead and start moving into our path of travel. Now, this is what I was talking about when it comes to lane filtering situations that are not going to be good for us is that where is your escape path in this situation? Do you swerve left? Are you going to hit the vehicle to our left? Are you going to accelerate? You're going to run to this vehicle right here. Are you going to apply the brakes and decelerate? Well, that might buy you some time. You don't have to fully stop in order to miss this type of incident. All you have to do is slow down enough to allow them to get out of your path of travel. What about swerving right? assuming that this vehicle is going to keep going left. Well, if we look back a little bit, we have a vehicle right there. So if you swerved right and that's all you did, you're going to run into that vehicle. So there's a different skill set that you guys need to have when it comes to lane filtering. You need to know the whole situation awareness. Think of a bird's eye view and you need to know this whole 360 cone of yours. And it's really hard to do when you're lane filtering. So you need to start imprinting this type of stuff in your brain. So if you start to see these types of things while you're riding, hopefully well, after watching this video, you're going to know what to do. So in this situation, definitely slow down. You can go from 43 miles per hour to maybe 30, and that's going to be enough of a slowdown deceleration for this vehicle to get out of your way, and you can continue on with your day. Not a big deal. But what happens here is that we never really slow down, and then we start to crash into them. Now, once again, this is going to be an angular incident, but at 43 miles per hour, you're definitely going to have some injuries to your hand and then your right leg just from this impact. And then when you fall down again, you're you're going to have shoulder, elbow, you're going to have whole right side possibly hit your head, you're going to have much more. And then when you start to roll, you're going to have your back, you're going to have your other side. Now your bike is almost totaled. Um, kind of hope it is that way you get your insurance to pay for a new bike. But anyways, um, hopefully he's going to do fine. But remember, wear full gear that is going to cover everything. So right here, this is kind of typical with gear. It's going to slide up and everything. So you might have some road rash there. But it seems like he's wearing full gear. That's not a big deal. Uh, he might have regular pants, um, but he's got a jacket. He's got gloves. He's got at least a helmet. And then hopefully he's got some sturdy boots because you can definitely hit your leg on this one. So not a good situation for anybody involved. Um, hopefully he doesn't get hit and ran over because he is in the path of travel of other vehicles. So hopefully that vehicle that was off to his side is not going to hit him. So hopefully we can prevent this by being a little bit extra careful with our lane filtering. We're going to jump into this one and this is going to be uh, not in the United States. This is going to be something uh, possibly in Mexico, but we have a rider that is riding. He's going to go ahead and get out of the way. He has a good situational awareness. You notice he's looking in his mirrors and he's kind of like waving the guy. Okay, go ahead and take it. So that was what I'm talking about, a 360 cone of situational awareness. Now, th this situation is going to be relatively uh, unique. Typically, what I do is I watch 
the rider themselves with the GoPro crash. So this is a really good situation where we get to see what happens when somebody collides with another vehicle lane filtering. Now, this is definitely not enough room for you to lane filter. So if there's not enough room, don't do it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. So in this situation, do what this rider with the GoPro is doing and kind of just hanging back, recognizing I don't need to lane filtering. Traffic is moving. We're all good. So right here, what happens is that he actually catches. He tries to evade uh, the vehicle to uh, the right. Now, why is that vehicle to the right kind of scooting over to the left, kind of pinching that motorcycle rider? And this is where typically motorcycle riders can be like, well, it's the it's the driver's fault. They moved over and hit him. Well, why is that? Well, he's trying to get away from the bus. The bus is taking a huge, massive lane, possibly kind of scooting over a little bit, not into his lane, but just scooting enough to causing that driver to be a little scared. So I'm going to scoot over too, giving himself a space cushion. That is typically what we as riders do, and that's what drivers do. So it's a human trait here. So that's what's happening here. He's going to go ahead and move forward a little bit, and it's going to cause the rider to do the same but the rider doesn't have room to the left. And that's a big problem with lane filtering. If you're gonna lane filter, do it, get it over with, get it done. Don't do it at a high rate of speed, do it in a safe area, uh, but get it done. Don't just hang out there. So he's gonna catch and this is not good at all. So he caught that rear wheel with his bike, uh, unsure what portion, but it's gonna cause a massive problem with his control of the bike. And when he does that, it's going to make him dump the bike. So if you notice on his right foot, I'm assuming he's wearing the same shoes, not good shoes, definitely not protection for the foot and the ankle. So easily have an injury there. So I'm assuming his left foot is planting now. And since it's planted, he's traveling at possibly, let's say 30 miles per hour. Well, his foot's going to get stuck and he's going to keep traveling at 30 miles per hour, easily rip that foot off. I've seen it. Definitely pay attention to this type of stuff. So he's going to fall down and there's that knee impact. That's why we have knee protection in motorcycle specific pants. Make sure you check your armor. Once again, I have that ebook where it does talk about what you should be looking out for. Make sure you don't get that fake stuff and then he's gonna go ahead and crash. So now he's holding onto the bike and it's gonna take him for a ride. And this whole time his leg is sliding across the ground, his jeans are completely ripped. So make sure you get motorcycle specific gear like Aramid fibers, Kevlar, Kovec, all these different types of things that reduce heat transfer and reduce abrasions. So right here, easily foot trauma, foot trauma, back trauma, hand trauma. Uh, he's gonna have road rash everywhere. Uh, relatively low speed, not a lot of road rash, not a lot of sliding, but you do have impact. So he's gonna be very sore if not injured. Uh, hopefully he's able to get up and continue on with his day. But remember guys, this is a huge risk that we're taking in order for us to do what? Get a little bit more time off our commute. That's not worth it. Now he's gonna have to situate himself uh, in the hospital and figure everything out. So no protection other than a helmet that's not good enough. I know I said I would rather have broken bones than a traumatic brain injury, but at the end of the day, I don't wanna have broken bones or a traumatic brain injury, so I'm wearing full gear all the time. All the gear, all the time. Make sure you guys are doing that. The things that I think that we can take away from this is making sure that we predict the hazards well ahead enough time with good situational awareness. Utilize the code chart that I have. Utilize yellow and orange all the time and red if you absolutely need it. Now with the red stage, make sure we are evading these hazards by utilizing good emergency maneuvers like an emergency swerve, an emergency braking, and, and understanding what ourselves as riders can actually do and what our bikes can do. That it only comes with practice. Do a parking lot practice. I got a free resource, ddfmcrew.com. Check it out. A bunch of parking lot practice exercises that are absolutely free. I want you guys to know how to do these things. Another thing is make sure we're wearing full gear just in case those two first things fail and we do hit the ground, we do hit something that we're minimizing these injuries so we can get up and go and do this stuff again and have fun or realize we just want to quit but we're not having life altering or life ending injuries. So guys, I wanna make sure you guys don't do these types of things. So have these videos imprinted in your brain, figure out the situations that are happening and don't do them yourself. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll see you around.